Hello, and uh, in this video we will be discussing some of the first American light tanks. Not the absolute first, like the M1917 light tank used in World War I, but the interwar light tanks, and the tanks that led to the M2A4. Now, I would like to say before I begin discussing the tanks from the M1 combat car to the M2A3 that the sources will be in the description and that I will always try to bring the correct information. If I say anything that you feel is not correct or seems incorrect, then make sure to do your own research and if you find something that contradicts something that I've said, please comment it, along with the source. I also enjoy learning, even if it means I was incorrect in a previous statement. Now, on to the video. The M1 combat car, officially Light Tank M1, was a light tank used by the U.S. Cavalry in the late 1930s, which was being developed around the same time of the M2 light tank, which is another tank we will discuss. However, the light tanks in the U.S. were defined as infantry support first by the general staff. The light tanks were designed to be five tons or less, so they could be carried by trucks. Along with this, there was tight restrictions on the spending, which was a big reason for only a couple of vehicles being developed a year. Part of the reason for the mechanization of the army is General Douglas MacArthur, who had a somewhat unique idea that the cavalry tank should be used to exploit enemy weaknesses, not just to support the infantry. Now, back to the M1 combat car, which was manufactured by the Rock Island Arsenal, and accepted in 1935 with a crew of four, the commander in the turret, a gunner in the turret, a driver in the front left hull, an assistant driver in the hull front right. There was a total of around 113 built, the M1 combat car had a single 30 caliber. Now. The actual name of combat car was used to bypass the National Defense Act of 1920, which gave responsibility of tanks to infantry, and so the cavalry were not allowed tanks. Therefore, the combat car let them sidestep these rules and add the M1 combat car to the cavalry. This ended in 1940 when the Armored Forces was created, merging the infantry and cavalry into a single force. The M1 combat car went through many variants that added a 50 cal, better transmission, a radio, better suspension, and a better engine. The end of the combat car came as many nations realized after the Spanish Civil War that tanks needed cannons, not just machine guns. These tanks only saw service in the Philippines from 1941 to 1942, with only Filipino forces using them. And so, when the Philippines fell, the Japanese then gained the vehicles. However, any remaining on U.S. soil were used for training. However, this vehicle still has one interesting story, or at least a somewhat distant relative of the vehicle. The M1 combat car also had its chassis used for an artillery tractor called the T3 Tracked Light Tractor. After some improvements and ending up with the T3E4 tracked light tractor. These were sent to the Antarctic in 1939 and used to carry cargo from the Stonington Island and the Ross Ice Shelf, or called Little America. After the mission was completed, the tractors were abandoned and two remain at the Stonington Island to this day. Now, on to the M2A1. The single cylindrical turret with an extension for weapons mounts marks this vehicle as a light M2A1, otherwise it's very similar to the M1 combat car. The tank also features a cupola on the rear of the turret. The gun was a 50 caliber M2 Browning with a coaxial 30 caliber Browning, the M1919. The tank had a 36 mile per hour top speed or 58 kilometers an hour. The crew was three men, with the commander acting as the gunner and the loader. The M2A1 had only 10 units built in 1936. After the M2A1, it was clear that the army wanted a twin turreted design. That was at the time popular, however, falling out of favor with many nations. And so, the M2A2 was made, with one turret housing the main 50 caliber and the other housing the 30 caliber with 239 units being produced and being used frequently among the U.S. infantry tank troops. 
However, in 1937, its shortcomings and obsolete configuration became more obvious. The tank was dubbed the Mae West after an American female stage and film actress. A continuation of the M2A2, the M2A3, had its suspension revised and the hull slightly lengthened. The front armor was increased to 25mm and only 72 units were produced due to rapid specification changes. I do not believe that the M2A1, A2, or A3 were ever used in combat, but they were used in training. We will discuss the M2A4 as well as some other vehicles in the next video. I want to thank you for watching and say that I'll see you next time. However, this is not quite the end of the video. Because it's my first video, I want to give some extra details about myself and what the channel will be like. Most of my videos will be on ground vehicles. However, I will have some videos on aerial vehicles as well as naval vessels. I may also from time to time branch out and tell historical stories that, while hopefully involving vehicles, may not at some points, because I do have some interest in just telling interesting tales about people or events that have occurred in the past. I will also try to make my videos longer from this point forward, however I did believe that around a 6 or 7 minute video for the tanks would be okay for my first video as a general idea for you guys to understand what my channel will be like. As for an upload schedule, I currently don't have one, however I do plan to upload at least somewhat frequently with hopefully at minimum one video per month and maybe if I get into the swing of things, more than that. But for now, I don't really have an upload schedule, so there could be some distant uploads or many uh, within the same week. Now, a little about me. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I have a college background in history or any type of historian teachings, but what I do have is an extreme love and passion since a young age for the topic of history. It's always been my favorite subject throughout school, and I've always loved learning about it even when out of the academic setting. Now, I would once again like to reiterate that I will always try my best to make sure every bit of information I give you is factually correct. I will, at times, make errors, and if that happens, and if you feel like that's happening, or if you know that's happening, please do comment it and bring your source, and I will make sure to look into it and learn with you. I also wanted to reiterate that all my sources will be in the description, along with where I have the film in the video from. For my last section of the video, I wanted to give credit to some people who I've taken massive inspiration from while starting this channel. The first being Potential History. Potential History is an incredible channel that has incredible videos about a diverse range of topics, mainly considering tanks, but he has recently broadened his video scope out into many different topics, with his most recent being about one of the first successful submarine attacks. It was an incredible video and he does basically everything I do, but much better. The next person I would recommend is Tank Encyclopedia. Tank Encyclopedia has a very extensive library of almost every tank you could look for no matter how niche it is. He does incredible content on this and if you ever want to know about a specific tank, please do look into Tank Encyclopedia. He does some incredible work. And finally, once again, I would like to thank you for watching my first video and if you enjoyed it, I would very much like for you to subscribe and hopefully be there for what I post next. Once again, it'll be over the M2A4 and some other vehicles around that time period, probably light tanks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.